What if I told you that the most dangerous engine ever built for Formula One wasn't the loudest? Wasn't the most explosive and never once tried to kill its driver? What if I told you the deadliest weapon of the entire turbo era was quiet, not chaotic, not violent, just cold, precise, unstoppable. In a decade where teams were melting pistons, blowing turbos sky high and detonating engines with every tiny mistake, Honda created something completely different. An engine with no fear, no rage, no drama, an engine that didn't win by out-muscling the competition, but by outthinking them. A weapon so efficient, so calculated, that the FIA realized, way too late, that nothing on the grid could survive against it. And that engine was only one and a half liters. When it came on boost, it didn't roar, it didn't scream, it didn't explode, it whispered. A clean, surgical sound that let everyone know, this is not a battle, this is a procedure. Welcome back to Hidden Car Gems, the channel where we talk about cars that make absolutely no sense. And today, we're diving into the quiet assassin that ended an entire Formula One era. Honda's RA-168E, the 1.5-liter twin-turbo V6 that didn't just dominate the sport. It clinically executed the turbo era and forced the FIA to pull the plug on the most powerful generation of engines in racing history. Back in 1988, Formula One was terrified of its own creations. The turbo era had gotten out of control. Teams were running four-bar boost, enough pressure to turn pistons into soft chewing gum. BMW's engines were cracking cylinder heads. Ferrari was detonating fuel so violently that exhaust pipes glowed white. And Renault, once the father of the turbo era, was struggling to keep its engines alive for more than a race or two. The FIA had to step in. They capped boost at 2.5 bar. They limited fuel to 150 liters. They strangled the turbo cars intentionally, hoping the new, naturally aspirated 3.5 liter machines would rise up and reclaim the sport. Everyone expected the turbos to die quietly, but the only thing that actually died was the FIA's plan. Honda looked at the new rulebook and didn't complain. They didn't panic. They didn't scale back. They simply went into the laboratory and built something the world had never seen. While every other manufacturer tried to modify their existing engines to fit the new rules, Honda threw their old turbo engine in the trash and started fresh, with nothing but restrictions to guide them. And from those restrictions, they shaped a masterpiece. The RA-168E wasn't just an engine. It was a calculation, a formula a precision instrument designed to win races without wasting even a molecule of fuel. It had an 80-degree V6 layout, two tiny IHI turbochargers, magnesium compressor housings, ceramic turbine wheels, an aluminum silicon head, a ductile iron block that refused to warp under heat, and fuel injectors that pulsed like medical equipment. Nothing was oversized. Nothing was aggressive. Everything was balanced. It didn't behave like a turbo engine. It behaved like a machine built for a vacuum chamber. Predictable, exact, controlled. Senna said the power curve felt like it was drawn with a ruler. Frost said the throttle response was unnervingly clean. What they were really describing was a turbo engine that didn't act like a turbo engine at all. Because Honda wasn't chasing maximum horsepower, they were chasing maximum efficiency. The one thing the rulebook couldn't restrict. And efficiency was the one metric nobody else mastered. The real genius wasn't inside the engine block, it was inside the fuel tank. To survive a full race on only 150 liters, Honda created a chemical cocktail so potent it bordered on illegal, but it wasn't. Up to 84% toluene, a fuel so knock resistant that Honda could run extreme temperatures and pressure without the engine detonating itself into shrapnel. But that wasn't enough. Honda heated the fuel before injecting it, making it vaporize perfectly. Better atomization, cleaner burn, more power, less fuel waste. This was surgical, mathematical, obsessive. While other teams were begging their drivers to short shift and save fuel, Honda told their drivers something unheard of in 1988. Push, and Prost did. At Amola, he ran flat out for more than half the race, something no other turbo engine could even dream of. Ferrari couldn't match it. 
BMW couldn't match it. Even Lotus, running the same engine, couldn't match it because their chassis wasn't built around Honda's quiet monster. And before we go any deeper, let me ask you something. If you're enjoying this breakdown of how a tiny 1.5 liter engine outsmarted an entire era of F1, consider hitting subscribe. This channel grows only because of you, and the bigger we get, the crazier the stories I can bring you. All right, let's talk about the machine Honda turned into a scalpel, the McLaren MP44. The MP44 wasn't just good, it was engineered around the RA168E with the same cold precision Honda used. A low chassis, a small tank, a reclined driving position, a gearbox tucked so tightly against the engine it looked like one organism. The entire car was built with one philosophy. If the engine wastes nothing, the car must waste nothing. When Senna first drove the MP44, he said it felt like the car wasn't fighting him. It was cooperating, like the machine wanted to win as badly as he did. And when the RA168E boosted up at full throttle, it didn't scream. It whispered with confidence. <laughs> In qualifying, the MP44 was untouchable. Senna took 13 poles. Prost took the rest. No other car came close. In races, McLaren won 15 out of 16 Grand Prix. The only race they didn't win was Monza, and only because Senna collided with a backmarker. This wasn't dominance. This was extermination. But here's the part nobody understood at the time. The RA168E wasn't fast because it was powerful. It was fast because it was predictable. It delivered torque across such a wide band that the drivers could place the car anywhere. It responded instantly, not violently. It didn't surge. It didn't lag. It didn't fight back. That stability made the MP44 invincible in corners and unstoppable on straights. Confidence adds seconds, and Honda gave McLaren confidence for free. By the end of the season, the FIA realized something terrifying. The turbo era wasn't out of control. It was under Honda's control. If Honda stayed in Formula One with this engine, nothing, absolutely nothing, would stop them. Not Ferrari, not Renault, not BMW, not even rule changes. So the FIA killed the entire concept. No more turbos, no more boost, no more RA-168E. The engine wasn't beaten, it was banned. Because when you build something so perfect, the rule book can't contain it. You haven't just dominated the sport, you've ended an era. The RA168E didn't roar its way into history. It whispered, cold, calculated, precise. The deadliest engine ever made, because it never had to show aggression. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the quiet assassin of Formula One, hit subscribe. Your support keeps this channel alive and lets me uncover more machines that didn't just win, they rewrote history.